Let's have a look at what we can do with a snippet roll. Hello and welcome to the Treasured Page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. And we've been having a look at making snippet rolls in the previous video. I'll leave the link below. I want to have a look now at what I have created here and how I might add that to the journal because I think that would be helpful for you to see. And I think because I've created some nice botanical images on this one, this is going to fit the theme of my current journal that I'm working on, which is the French Linen Botanical Journal. And that is all in the playlist with the uh, link below and you can find how I'm getting on with that. So I've got a few bits here that I'm, I'm yet to do, the book plate. I want to type something in there or stamp something on there, but I'm not quite sure. Probably just keep it simple with the date, but that's gonna be fixed on there. And I think what I will do, just while I'm talking about it, is I'm going to emboss that with one of the Tim Holtz embossing glazes once I've uh, put my type or my written word or a stamp on there. So here we are so far. I've been finding more ephemera bits, digital kits and things from my stash and every time I find something I'm just pulling it into the journal and I'm clipping it on the front. I'm yet to do something here. I would like a nice pocket system. That sounds fun. That just popped into my head. A pocket system. Ooh, okay, I've got to make one now that I've said that. Um, then I've, I've got this little ephemera holder that we've made together and I've just embellished it on the front so I wanted to show you that. I had some rub on stamps, um, you know rub on images like transfers. I didn't think it was going to work so I didn't do it on camera but it actually did even though this is quite a fibrous piece of paper it did transfer quite well. So if you do have any handmade paper uh, the rub on transfers if you've got any or can get hold of any from your craft store uh, they do work quite well on a rough background. And then I've added one of the stamps that we've made in a previous video and a postal stamp that I had, which is a more of a vintage one. So in there, and I put another one on there, only I found because it's soft tissue paper, when I started to do the rub on it, it did um, affect the, the paper. So I sort of stopped that and I just put that on there like that. And what I thought for this journal, because it's all talking about botanicals and travel and sewing and off to France to to uh, look at seeds and plants and alpine flowers and things, um, I thought that this could be a great place to collect seeds and pockets and samples, press flowers, that sort of thing. So this journal has been inspired by Arthur Bully and his wife Harriet. Arthur and Harriet were a couple that were married and they lived in Ness, which is in Liverpool, Neston, just outside of Liverpool on the Wirral. And they were there in the early 1900s. They got married when they were 29 and they became a team of people. <laughs> they teamed up and they created one of the largest collection of plants in England at that time, uh, certainly in 1901 through to oh, until Arthur died in 1942. So they, they had a lifelong love of plants, gardens, and uh, they have they set up the botanical gardens in Ness, which is a huge, huge 24 acre plot of land that still exists. A, today for the general public and uh, there yeah so I'm delving into the story of all of that and the history and so some of these images here especially the image that started off in France and I picked out some fabrics that have got French on French writing on them the trees that grow in this garden it's all just been linking in and just it's just a journal making itself once again. So thank you for joining me on this uh, ride. <laughs> We're having a look at the snippet roll that we created and I'm just going to potter in my journal as Arthur would have potted in his greenhouse and planting his plants. I'm planting seeds for the future, for future people to come and see, seek and wonder and and it's all here for them and they can either use the journal to write in it themselves or I may write in it myself in the future. But I'm now just going to work out where to put these lovely things that I've been making. So I've been made 
making this ephemera pack here which is brilliant but it's very soft and it wants to go somewhere I've also got this which I just think that this could even be Harriet it's I've got a picture of Harriet which I shall print out and I'm going to have that as my front page I think and it's just this wonderful study about the plant hunters and um how some of the look this so this is the head garden head gardener um mr josiah hope and he was 88 uh, years there he but he had been in, with nest gardens the botanical gardens for 50 years so he worked very closely alongside arthur bully and this is all about Arthur Bully and the Great Plant Hunters. So it's just a book that I'm reading, but it's a bit more than that because I was led down this path by finding a vintage letter and I started reading all about Neston and the little village of where, where all of this was taking place. And this is the Bees Company. Um, this is the logo in 1910 and he... He often described his staff as busy bees, so it was a nursery set up for the production and the cultivation of seeds, seeds from rare places such as Burma, China, and uh, on the foothills of the Himalayas and Tibet and places like that. And they were bringing all back all these wonderful plant samples, and then they were being cultivated. And he was renaming things look like this jasmine plant here. I don't know if you can see that, whether that's showing up, but he's naming that in an in a Latin name after his bee uh, nursery. His company is called Bees Limited, um, and, and it's just interesting so if you now come across seeds or plants or any of those things if you see the word bulliana or beesiana or foresty those are all the named after the people that we're talking about throughout this journal so george forrest was the plant hunter that went out he was commissioned to go out and find all these seeds and this is Harriet, so I'm saying it's Harriet, it's obviously not, but let's say it is. And uh, she has these wonderful gardens to look after while Arthur is doing all his uh, busy growing and cultivating of seeds in the greenhouse. Uh, she is very much working hard in the gardens and um, what she what she is, is she's actually a feminist and she's very of the time, which was incredible because women didn't get a look in for a lot of things. This is all before the Second World War and, and in fact, before the First World War. So she's um, she she goes about helping and employing women to come and help do the gardening. What? Women doing the gardening? You've never heard anything like it. So she did. She she got, um, because men were being called up to go uh, for the First World War, she thought, right, well, let's get the girls involved. And, oh, caused a massive stir in the local Neston town. They all thought, what is she up to? I'm just sticking this stamp down. It's beautiful. It's a black swan. Another story about a black swan. I'll come to that in a minute. Uh, so, yes, girls, girls gardening. How cool is that? So she had them all uh, coming to work, which was a fantastic idea. Very pioneering. Um, men were being used elsewhere. And so she got these girls. And because they were cotton merchants, her husband was a cotton merchant. He'd inherited a cotton business from his father. With his brothers, they had to run this cotton uh, merchant business and they were going all around the world selling cotton so cotton was not something that was a problem for them and they were able to uh, supply uniform to these women uh, so that's what they did but because they were in a war and cotton was a commodity and they were astute people that didn't want to waste money they made uniform for women. I'm sure there's a picture of it in here. This is George Forrest who goes out to all these far-flung places, dices with death and the locals and sort of gets himself in a load of hot water and nearly got murdered. 
um, but he escaped with seeds. This is the Primula bulliana that's incredibly famous. Uh, Primula's being brought back from China. And let me see if I can... So this is where I'm reading. <laughs> I'll keep dipping it. Oh, this is um, Arthur and he's old. Uh, let me flick through and see if I can find the uniforms that these women had to wear when they were asked to come and help in the gardens. Here, Bees Limited. And that's the uh, primulas that they're bringing back from China. Aren't they lovely? I love that script, that font. So it all takes place in Liverpool, England. Oh, it's really interesting. Now, look, this is the... They try to grow this on Snowdon in, in uh, Wales. But here's the girls that were... So, women gardeners. This is Hannah Jones and Susie Smith. And what they did was they sort of gave them these breeches or shorts um, so they weren't going to give them full dresses. They, they were giving them these shorts and then they've got long socks on so they're not even being given trousers because they were trying to save on the cotton even though cotton was easy for them to come by. <laughs> it wasn't that practical. They wanted them to be able to get out into the gardens. They had their long woollen socks that they could pull up for winter but when they were out in the garden it's hot work it, for anyone male or female so there they are having a wonderful time being put to work earning a living as well which was all of this was unheard of um in this time i don't know if it's yeah not, well the 1920s this is coming in but she started this before with the women workers uh very early on and they were the talk of the town so, uh, yeah, she was uh, very pioneering herself. I'm going to attempt to do a belly band here with this snippet roll that I made in the last video. And I think the colours just tie in very nicely with what's on this page. So I just need some scissors. And this is how journaling can come together very quickly when you've already got the things. So there we go. That's a snippet roll in action. It would be perfect if I cut it straight. <laughs> So, yeah, let's just do that now. Cut it straight. And then, all we need to do is stick it down. I'll take a bit off the top. And instantly, you've got a belly band. So if you've been thinking about making a snippet roll, looking at the video from, from last time, I'll leave the link so that you can easily find it. Uh, you can just very simply now put a page together without any fuss or bother. Uh, just glue it down. Why can't I cut straight today? Look at that. If I turn it this way, I can see it a bit better. That's it. Yep, so I like that. I could straighten it up or I could leave the overhanging bits. Let's just see what it looks like straightened up. So the gardens are put together over years of time. 24 hectares, that's 64 acres of land being used. They live there, they've got the family home on site and there's some other buildings there as well with a head gardener who we've just seen in that picture is Josiah Hope. They have um, they have let him have a little small holding on the land. So he lives there with his wife and his, um, I think he's got a son or a daughter, so he's got a child. And they all live there and they all sort of have to make this company work during the most sort of difficult of times. And then what happens is that the head gardener, um, so they're desperately trying to make ends meet they're trying to keep these gardens up and running well if you can imagine you've got a, a well not a, not necessarily an army but you've got a team of women trying to help keep the gardens in check 
and you've got a head gardener and you're paying money out for your seed collectors overseas, then you've got all the overheads of trying to run a nursery, keep everything going, fuel and food and wages for everybody. It's a business that needs to run itself. It can't be... Um... Right, I'm just pause that thought because I've got a rip here and it doesn't look terribly great so I'm just going to take that away and maybe add this scrap in here that's what I'll do I shall yep yeah so they've got overheads have got a lot of money to find to keep it all running and what's more, they have to make this work because they've got these seeds coming over and their mission, if you like, their goal is to bring seeds to the everyday people. They want... So if you imagine back in this sort of Victorian time, a very Victorian pastime was to collect seeds from afar and they were collecting some of these... Uh, upper class shall we say people with money were collecting orchids and things like that and they were having they were even building things called orchid houses so they had um, special places just to grow these exotic flowers and Arthur was one of them but he didn't like that the flowers were only being seen by people with money he was very affected by that. He didn't like that at all. He wanted everyone to be able to see a, a Himalayan mountain flower. He didn't just want that to be exclusively for his own personal pleasure. Uh, so that was the whole premise of setting up Bees Limited. It was so that he could bring seeds to anyone and everybody, no matter how much they could afford so he created the penny packets of seeds so that the everyday man or woman family family even if they didn't have land or they didn't have access to grow things outside they had pot plants and they had window boxes so they did have that so that's why this the penny seed packets came into play and they were able to see some of these amazing flowers that have been brought back from Europe and also some seeds were made available from China. Well, he had to make some money and the only way he could really make money was to sell some of these sensational flowers that he was bringing back from the Himalayas and Tibet and China and the foothills of uh, the mountainous ranges out in Burma, all these places. So he was charging more money for those ones and he was advertising for them, they were all coming at a cost. But then you've got, you've saved money by using these female workers um, because to find a man that you, you could employ that was also being called up to go and fight in the, in the war was very difficult, so it's a very very clever way of doing it and that was all before the land girls and everything else in the second world war so yeah that's how they tackled it and then they had the head gardener josiah was called up to go and help with the war effort he was called up a total of three times and each time harriet and and uh Arthur co concocted the plan of keeping him where he needed to be because without him they just couldn't cultivate the the seeds because Arthur was being in two places at once being a cotton merchant and trying to start this seed business off uh, they had to keep him 
they had to keep the head gardener when they needed the head gardener. Uh, so what they decided to do was, and she and uh, Harriet were very keen on making sure that everybody was looked after and fed. She hated any kind of poverty. She's actually very religious. Uh, her husband wasn't. He was agnostic. And the two of them got married outside of church. They got married um, in a registry office because this lady would follow her husband all over the world. It was a real love story. They were absolutely besotted with each other. Um, Arthur and Harriet, they were good for one another and they brought the best out in, it, in each other. That's how they've been described. And uh, so I think that's wonderful. Uh, what else am I doing? So these are the primulas that they were being being brought back. And um, yeah, so to, to stop the head gardener um, having to go off to war and all the uncertainties that that would have brought, he's, he uh, was... It was he was needed to remain. They sort of came up with the idea that they would um, grow food, grow, grow and cultivate, and dedicate a large, sizable part of their garden over to the the production for food to help feed people. And so that's what they did. Oh, I keep throwing in things where I find them. This is another idea. I'll come back to that. That's all about Darwin. Well, actually, Darwin was... Uh, this, so this is 1831, 1836 to 1835. This is um, Darwin's voyage. Uh, and this whole thing was published in 1850. Nine, the origin of species, which was um, in, uh, so Darwin's discoveries on the Galapagos Islands, results in the theory of evolution in his book, The Origin of Species, which was published in 1859. Well, this would have been a book that Arthur would have been ter tremendously inspired about because this was all the talk when Arthur was growing up. So the thought of voyage and sailing and searching for species over in other countries would only have fueled his intrigue and passion to go and travel the world to look for his flowers and his seeds to bring back to the people. And uh, so that's why that's in there, because I think that's interesting. And I just so happened to find it. It was a first edition stamp um, of the Charles, to honour Charles Darwin's. It came out in 1982 um, and it's a first edition stamp. So that's, you know, that's interesting ephemera and I shall add that in when I find the right spot. So I just want to use my snippet roll. I'm yarning on here telling you all about it, but um, I just thought while I do that, you can just see some of my process, really. I'm just, what I think I've got here is two belly bands. Or... A lower tuck, but I just want to. I want to make sure I've got an. Oh, see, I, that could repair there, couldn't it? That could repair this bit. I've got a bit down there that that I want to hide. Maybe I like that. And I want to make sure I've got enough energy that goes through the journal that we don't lose momentum halfway through. Uh, we keep putting things in, so I'm just offering it up to the different colour tone papers, and then when I feel like it uh, wants to live there, that is when I will put it there. I quite like that. Um, oops, oh, I've got sticky there. So we've got that. We've done this. Um, I'm coming back to this one, don't worry. Lots of votes for birds, flowers and butterflies. So uh, that's a triple. <laughs> triple. Th that's nice now. I may not keep that there, but I like that. Oh, I've got an idea here. Good, OK, so it's all coming on. And I might want something here. That's nice. Just take that bit off. Keep going. 
Yeah, so they were cultivating food and um, the head gardener was, uh, they told the war office that uh, they needed Josiah Hope, the head gardener, to help with his expertise for growing food, which of course they did, so they, they set about doing that, that was all fine. Uh, but what they also did was carry on with the important work of cultivating all these seeds and plants and they got him out of having to go. Um, but they did make sure that they, they did what they said they were going to do, uh, which was make sure that everybody had extra food. And uh, there they developed a quite a lot. They, got, they grew quite a lot of food uh, during the war. So that's another function for that. So this is snipping away at the snippet roll and then adding in pieces where I just think that that's quite fun. So this could be a belly band that goes that way now. And all we do is glue it down. And then you've got a loving husband dedicating a collection of flowers to a garden for his wife. He was doing it just as much for her as he was for his own pleasure because that's something that they shared. They met through finding local plants. They met through a society of... Uh, hunting for different species in the UK, looking for wildflowers, documenting, and the thrill of finding new species, uh, logging them and having them named, was, was the very thing that led the two to find one another in the first place. So that was their thing, that was their what they did. And uh, so they set about doing that on a big scale, but it wasn't just any old scale, it was huge and it was worldwide. And just what they were able to achieve for all of us all around the world and bring some of these beautiful flowers to everyday gardening and flower displays was uh, significant, very significant when you think of all the bouquets of flowers that people have on their wedding day or things that they're given on their birthday, uh, gifting, and just all for the purpose of happy, kind, um, uplifting, you know, all these wonderful things that just bring joy. So they wanted to bring joy to the masses. So the the person that was struggling at work could still enjoy beautiful blooms out of a flower pot just because they didn't have the money to have a bigger space or an expanse of garden. It didn't matter. Arthur and, and his wife Harriet wanted to bring that wonderment to everybody. And so that's why I've been fascinated by their little journey, their story, because... It's, it's one of great kindness and intrigue and passion. So there we are, you can see how that might work. And then we've got one more bit. I'm going to need to make more, but it's fun to make these uh, snippet rolls. So yes, if you haven't um, had a go, this is sort of how you can add it to a journal. So I think I'll have one further back here. And this is sort of a page that looks like it wants something a bit more exciting so I think I'll add that one in there I think I'll have it up that way and that's how we do it yeah so how lovely is that your husband is working to create a garden that you can walk through together knowing that all the species of things you've collected from around the world and he was bringing it together for her, for his wife and he was doing it for his daughter when she arrived Lois absolutely besotted with his daughter as well because they tried for many years to have children and it eventually happened uh, she was a bit older, Harriet, when she had children and the garden was dedicated to their daughter they had a son as well, but they let, let, uh, 
not a belly band, I need to go down there as well. They left it to the daughter. <laughs> and the most important thing to Lois when she grew up, um, she decided that the most important thing of her father's garden and mother and father's garden was to keep it running. And she wouldn't have been able to do that single-handedly and she decided to bequeath the whole lot to the University of Liverpool in England for them to carry on with the express understanding that the gardens would forever remain available to everybody, the public, at all times. It was never to be kept as a private enterprise just for the university it had to be for anyone and everybody to come and enjoy that was the whole idea so that was that was very much what uh, her father and mother had dedicated their life's work to do and so yes the gardens remain today for everybody to see and they're still well kept and maintained and I think it's just a lovely story that I've been led to so uh, we like uh, to have botanical images in our journals and it's just really interesting to hear how some of them came about so there are plant collectors all over the world it wasn't just Arthur um, but he had a very very extensive collection so I hope this has been useful to see how you might add your snippet rolls into your journal Straightening the edge gives it a nice neat finish and brings it all together. I've got two fabrics that match. I've got colours that work on on both pages. Um, bringing in vintage ephemera behind is great. I could stamp on here if I wanted to make more of that. And uh, as, as it is, it's great. Um, I could even put some script stamp down the back now because... Uh, that has brought focus and intrigue to the page, but maybe I could I, I mean I could write down there that's writing space or maybe it just wants a nice big uh, letter or a sheet of paper. There's plenty of space there to slot in a letter like that and it for, to be a bigger one and to fill the page. So that's just an idea there to show you how that could be used. And then over here we've got this, which might be now nice to bring in some other bits and pieces. So that's how that would be used. And then again we've got this one here, which is, is currently looking after that ephemera holder. So there we go. That's how to use your snippet rolls and uh, create three different looks from one small strip. That was a 24-inch length that was used there so I hope that that's been good and how you might use your snippet rolls that uh, you might have been inspired to make and thank you very much for all the comments they've been wonderful I hope you've enjoyed the video today and I shall be showing you how I can use other things in the journal and how I'm going to embellish the envelope that I've got going on here so thank you very much for joining me today I hope that this has been fun for you and above everything else guys just slow down and make crafting time for you bye bye now